So this is the brand new Insta360 GO 3. It shoots 2.7K videos and has a ton of new features like free frame, loop recording, pre-recording, time capture, and normal video, which can be exported without using the Insta360 Studio or mobile app. It has voice control 2.0, two microphones, and can record 50% longer than the Go 2. And comes with an action pod, which by the way, has a 2.2 inch touchscreen, which you can flip and it barely overheats. So in today's video, I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know about this tiny, mighty action camera, the Insta360 GO 3. Now, Insta360 also sent me the GO 3 to test out and review, so I've been testing this for about a month now, but this video is not a paid sponsored video, so I'm not getting paid anything to make this review, which also means that Insta360 will not be able to see this video until it hits launch day. And uh, that means this is gonna be my completely honest review of the Go 3 and hopefully I can help you in the decision of whether or not this is the action camera for you. So let's take a look at what you get in the box. Opening the box here, the first thing you will see is the Go 3 itself. And if we take the Go 3 and put up next to the Go 2 here, we can see the slightest difference in size. So the Go 3 is a little bit bigger than the Go 2. Then we have a user guide, some paper, and a USB-A to USB-C charging and transfer cable. There's also an additional tilt accessory here for the magnetic pendants, which will help the Go 3 face more straightforward or slightly down, depending on how high or low you place the pendant. And the other accessories included is a pivot stand with a new quick lock system, which I am a huge fan of. The easy clip or a head clip is also included and the magnetic pendant itself and the brand new charging case also called the action pod. Now looking at the weight and the form factor of the Go 3 here versus the Go 2, the Go 3 weighs just about 9 grams more than the Go 2. It also has the same body type as the Go 2 but over the last two years it also gained some weight. It's still the same tiny action camera we're used to with the Go 2 but it's just a tiny bit bigger which means the old accessories won't fit unless you do some modifications. The Go 3 also has the same sensor and field of view as the Go 2 with a one over 2.3 inch sensor and a 134 degree field of view. Now, since the Go 3 is a little bit bigger than the Go 2, that also means a better battery life. With the Go 2, we were able to record videos up to 30 minutes on a single charge and up to 150 minutes with the charge case. The Go 3 itself is running off a 310 milliamp hour battery and the action pod has 1,270 milliamp hours, which gives the Go 3 a 50% increase in battery time and that also means a record time up to 45 minutes on a single charge and with the go 3 placed in the action pod you'll be looking at a massive 170 minutes of record time but as for recording these videos we saw with the go 2 that it had a limit when shooting normal videos and this was to prevent you from losing the footage if the camera should overheat and shut down but with the go 3 there is no limit to how long you can record a video because of the optimized and improved heat dissipation which means you can record for as long as you want or until the battery runs out. Now, let's talk about the new features you get with the Go 3 and the Action Pod compared to the Go 2. Now, compared to the Go 2, the Go 3 is packed with features like 2.7K recording at 30 FPS, which also, by the way, works as a normal video. So you don't have to take it through the studio app or the mobile app to export the video. You can just take it straight from the camera and then put it on your timeline. Sometimes it's just easier to take the file directly from the camera like you do with uh, another action camera like the Action 3. Just take 
take the video file out, put it on your timeline without any other adjustments, but you also have the free frame, which is working in the same way as what we're used to with the Go 2. So you basically have the best of both worlds. And free frame is what you'll be using for something like action sports, where you need the extra customization in the studio app. This is also where you have the horizon lock and you can also adjust the framing of your shot if you want to do that and also the aspects and the flow state stabilization. So if you want the option to put the same video into vertical and horizontal aspect, you will need to record with free frame. And this is basically the same as pro mode on the go to. It's just a different name. And the quality coming out of that is just stunning. You can check my Instagram for more results on, on how this actually looks when it exported through the uh, studio app and then uploaded to Instagram. So links will be down in the description below to my Instagram if you want to check out more of the footage, the vertical free frame footage coming from the Go 3. Now, talking about the Go 3, this is a camera that makes shooting videos more fun because it's such a small camera that you can place anywhere. So you basically have endless options of where and how you shoot videos, just like today's sponsor of this video when it comes to music and sound effects. Epidemic Sound is something I've been using for seven years now because it just works. And when it works, I see no point looking elsewhere. And what's really awesome is that they now have a mobile app, which makes it so much easier to browse music when you're out traveling and when you find the music you want you can just add it to your favorites and then later pick it up when you start editing your video inside the mobile app you can also find sections like trending tracks epidemic sounds own stuff picks which is usually awesome and the latest tracks so it doesn't really matter how you use the go 3 epidemic sound got you covered with more than 40,000 different tracks and 90,000 sound effects Try for yourself with the link in the description below and you will also get a 30 day free trial. Now let's get back to the Go 3. Now we also have some other features which is new to the Go 3. We have pre-recording, loop recording and timed capture. So with pre-recording, this will basically save 10 to 30 seconds of the video or what the lens sees before you actually press the record button. So if you find yourself in a situation that you're not sure when the action starts, then this can be a really beneficial option. But it's also important to know that this will drain additional battery. So make sure to keep it mounted in the action pod or at at least check the battery now and then. Now, as for loop recording, this records for the duration set between one and 30 minutes. And that means it will always save the last one to 30 minutes of the record. So if you set this to 10 minutes, for example, but you record for 15 minutes, that means it will only save the last 10 minutes. And if you want to use the Go 3 as a dash cam, for example, the loop recording is definitely something to consider. And we also have the new timed capture and what this basically does is to allow you to set a specific time or when you want the Go 3 to come back to life and then start recording. But if you're someone like me that likes to sleep in or you have a hard time catching the sunrise or sunset, the time capture is definitely going to be beneficial. There is a link down in the description already if you just want to, you know, get one while this is still in stock. It might run out fast because I can see this being a really popular action camera for a lot of people, especially with the improvement. So links down in the description below if you want to grab one right away and then come back to the video. Now let's talk about low light because that's a huge factor for a lot of us when we are looking to get uh, some action cameras like this. And we want them to perform Form good in low light as well as in daylight. And how does the low light of the Go 3 compare to the low light coming from the Go 2? It's the same sensor and it's the same lens, but I have a few samples here which we can take a look at. And the first one here is just from my uh, garage here, just mounted a Go 2 and also the Go 3 on uh, my handlebar. And we can see there is a huge difference here when it comes to recording in 2.7K 30 FPS versus pro mode at 30 FPS, which is 1440p. So there is a huge difference here if we take a look at the grain coming on the Go 2. Now, when putting the Go 3 into the free frame mode, which is basically the same mode as the pro mode on the Go 2, we can see here there is some differences as well. Even when shooting with the exact same settings uh, in 50 FPS this time, so 1440p, so we can see here that there is some differences 
in the quality here and both are using the vivid color profile as well and we can see especially here on the lamp here the go to is grainy and there's no adjustments done to the go three it's just straight out of camera no color grading no correction no noise reduction applied in post nothing so this is what you're gonna get and if we go over to the flat profile versus the log profile so here we have the go three shooting in the flat profile which is you know another word for the log profile which the go to has and we can also see here that there is some differences so this is also in 2.7k with the go 3 and 1440p with the go 2 so there is a significant difference between the go 3 and the go 2 when it comes to low light capabilities now the go 3 also comes with a brand new feature called voice control and this is pretty awesome actually this is something i've been testing a lot and i really enjoy the simplicity of how this works. Now, voice control is uh, not something new. We already have that with other Insta360 products as well. And we see in the GoPros and the Osmo Action lineup. But to have that in such a small, versatile, and fun camera it's just amazing and it basically makes it even more fun because it takes away the hassle of actually pressing the record button if you don't want to do that if you think pressing the record button just one button is too much now you can actually talk to it and it will record videos for you or take photos and what i really like is that i don't have to say hey insta 360 go 3 take a photo or record a video i can just say take a photo it will take a photo and i can say start recording and it will start recording Record or stop record and then it will stop record and I can see myself using this a lot with the go three actually because it's so much easier you know I when I have it on my uh, my hat or if I just have it mounted on my chest I can just say take a video and it takes a video and yeah it's so easy it's so easy now, talking about voice, the Go 3 also has better audio than the Go 2. It now has two microphones instead of a single microphone, which we had with the Go 2, which made it somewhat just okay for vlogging. And the only way to get somewhat decent audio was when you used the pendant or had the Go 2 close to your mouth. So to me, I didn't really like using the Go 2 as the camera that I'm talking to because of the single microphone and the microphone is also placed on the top of the Go 2. So when you have it facing towards you, the microphone is still going straight up. So yeah, but the Go 3 has an additional microphone right underneath the lens here, which means that it will pick up on the audio coming from the top microphone as well as whatever is in front of the lens. So this is an audio test between the Go 3 and the Go 2 and I'm having the camera's about an arm's length away from me. So which sounds better? Is it the Go 3 with its additional microphone or is it the Go 2? Now this is an audio test which illustrates using the magnetic pendant. I have both of the cameras now close to my chest. Which sounds better? Is it the Go 3 or is it the Go 2? So this is an audio test with the Go 3 and the Go 2. Now having the Insta360 114 centimeter selfie stick fully extended here. So which sounds better? Is it the Go 3 or is it the Go 2? Now let's talk about the action pod here and the size and weight of this compared to the Go 2. So first, this basically works as a charging case. Just like we saw with the Go 2, you have the charging case of the Go 2 here and you just place the Go 2 inside and it will start to charge. And the same thing goes with the Go 3 as well. So you have the Go 3 as a standalone de device here and then you just place it inside the charging case or the action pod and it will start to charge. But as of the weight and size of this without the Go 3, it's basically just short of 100 grams. To be more exact, 96.3 grams. So that's about 33 grams more than the charging case for the Go 2. Now, just in comparison, the total weight of the action pod with the Go 3 installed is 113.8 grams, where the Go 2 and the charging case is 90 grams. So there's not a huge difference there, but there is some difference. And after using these two now side by side for some weeks, I can't feel much of a difference. The only main difference is actually the size of the charging case itself. So that's basically the main differences when it comes to these two because it's such a low amount of grams it's barely 
noticeable at all, if if anything. But when it comes to the Go 3's uh, charging case, which is also called the Action Pod, this comes with a 2.2 inch touchscreen, which you can also flip. This is a big deal. And this is something that a lot of people will be excited about, including myself. I mean, you have the action pod, the charging case, everything, and you have everything here on the screen. So you turn it on and you can change all the settings. It has touch screen. The screen is super responsive and you can basically do everything that you want to do with the Go 3 on the screen here. So now we have this instead of just, you know, connecting to our phones and then adjusting the different settings or to navigate through the tiny screen here on the Go 2. I mean, this worked perfectly fine actually. I had no issues with this, but you see the size difference here in screen. It is a huge upgrade, a huge upgrade and something a lot of people will be fascinated about and um, Ah, it's amazing. And another thing which is amazing about this is that you don't really have to have the Go 3 installed in order to see the screen. So here we have the screen, right? And you can basically use this as, as a monitor. So you don't have to put the Go 3 in its case in order to use the screen. You can use them as two separate devices. How awesome is that? So I was putting the Go 3 on my son's bike and I was actually checking the framing with the action pod here. And when he took off, I could just tap the record button and it started recording. And you could do that with the Go 2 as well. But the fact that you have the screen and you can see the framing and you can change the settings like in an instant, you can go from, you know, a free frame or a normal video to time-lapse or HDR photo in just a second. It's just insane. Now, as for the range, when you use these two separately, if you're gonna use the action pod, as your monitor, there's actually a five meter range here. So whenever you use the action pod as your monitor, when the Go 3 gets out of reach, out of those five meters, it will basically start to reconnect again. But once the Go 3 comes back in within range, it will connect straight to the action pod. So you don't have to turn this off or on. Uh, the connection will basically just reappear once the Go 3 is within the five meter limit, which is also quite cool. Now let's just take a quick look at the action pod itself here. We have two buttons on the side here, one which is the on off button and one quick menu button which you can customize in the settings menu. To the left of the quick menu button we also have the speakers for when you play back the videos and on the other side here we have a dedicated lock button which needs to be pressed in order to remove the Go 3 from the action pod as well as a USB-C charging and transfer port and the opening for a microphone to provide a better directional audio when using this case. On the top, we have the start stop record button and on the bottom, we have a brand new quick lock system. So let's talk about the magnetic quick lock system from Insta360. Now, the concept of this is the same as we've seen with the Action 2 and the Action 3. But since the Go 3 and the Action Pod is two different devices that can actually be used separately, the Go 3 alone was also designed to fit this magnetic quick lock system without the need of the Action Pod. So that means you can use two of the same accessories, one for your Go 3 when you're out shooting your videos, and also one for your Action Pod which you can use as a monitor when you're out shooting those videos. Now, also been taking this all over the place to see how secure these uh, or this locking system was. And to be honest, it really impressed me. And if you're used to the locking system from DJI, especially the DJI Action 3, I would say these are pretty equal. So a really big improvement in terms of uh, security for when you're mounting the Go 3 as well. So to me, this new system here is highly appreciated. And for water activities, uh, we can't forget that. The Go 3 is uh, waterproof down to 5 meters or 16 feet, which is 1 meter deeper than the Go 2. The Action Pod, however, is not waterproof, but it is IPX4 water resistant, so it can withstand rain. But this is only when the Go 3 is mounted inside. So just in comparison to the Go 2, this case is not water resistant, but the Action Pod with the Go 3 installed 
is water resistant and this alone is waterproof down to five meters now when it comes to different shooting modes and changing different settings and picture profiles and all that you can actually do all of that on the action pods screen here or you can connect uh, your phone to the insta360 app and then connect the go 3 uh, as well but now that we have the huge screen on the action pod here it's much more satisfying to use this now swiping down from the top, you have the main settings for the action pod, like orientation lock, screen lock, volume, brightness, and so on. On. This is also where you enable time capture by selecting the alarm clock on the bottom right corner. Now swiping to the left here, we also get a few more options like pre-recording, change the audio settings, enable grid, and we can also dive deeper into the settings, which is what we're going to do. Now inside the settings tab, we also have the general settings where you can change like the vibration, indicator lights for when you're recording, and you also have two power options. Going back here, we also have the quick capture settings and this is where you can choose uh, what a single or a double press on the quick capture button should do. And this is the button that sits on the side of the action pod next to the on off button. And as for voice control, here you can also see a list of the active commands which the Go 3 will respond to. Now, further down the list here, we can change things as bit rates, sharpness, which I personally set to low and then rather add some sharpness in post. Also, audio settings we have here, language, and also if you want to reset the camera. Now, let's get back to the main screen. And from the main screen, swiping to the left from the right side will take you to the camera settings where you can adjust the manual settings or set everything to auto. Here, you can also change the color profiles. And the Go 3 comes with 10 new profiles to choose from. Two profiles for biking, two profiles for urban environments, two profiles for snow, two for night shooting, and two for water sport. So this got you covered in all situations. There's also another two options here, which is new to the Go 3, which is metering, either face or matrix, and the new low light stabilization option for urban and outdoor night scenes. Now going back to the previous screen here, on the right side of the previous screen, you can actually see the settings you're using as well. But this does only work if you're using uh, manual settings. So if you're using auto settings, there will not be any settings applied there. But for manual settings that you can actually see the settings you're using on the screen, that's pretty cool. Now swiping from the left side to the right side, you will get into the library. This is where you can preview and delete your current videos or photos. And if you go back and just swipe to the left or the right, just in the middle of the screen here, that will change to the different shooting modes. So here you can choose from a normal 2.7K video to something like HDR photo in just a second. And also depending on your shooting mode, swiping up from the bottom section, you get the different options available for that particular mode. Now on the bottom right, we also have the lens type. So here you can choose between ultra wide, action, linear, and narrow. So if you're using the normal video mode to shoot in 2.7K resolution, you would want to set this to your preferred lens type before you actually start shooting because you won't be able to change this in the studio app later. But if you're recording in the free frame mode, it doesn't really matter because you can do all the changes you need to do on the studio app or the mobile app, but this is also limited to 1440p up to 50 fps just like the insta360 go 2 so if you like the quality and the freedom coming from the go 2 by reframing changing aspect and selecting different lens types then this is the exact same mode just a different name now as for the other shooting modes we have slow motion time lapse time shift star lapse normal video and photo just like we've seen with the go 2 now, as for stabilization, there is now three different levels. However, these are only available when shooting in normal video, like the 2.7K resolution video and loop recording. So stabilization level one is suitable for the daily activities like vlogging, smaller hikes, and basically what you wanna use for your day-to-day -day activities. Now, level two is more towards those intense activities like running, snowboarding, skiing, surfing, and so on. And level three is suitable for the extreme activities like mountain biking or where the camera itself is experience a lot of movement.
Now let's talk about the pricing of the Go 3 and it also comes in three different versions. So you have 32 gigabytes, a 64 and a whooping 128 gigabytes now, which is fantastic. So the 32 gigabyte version retails for $379.99 and the 64 is $399.99 and the 128 gigabyte version is $429.99 US dollars. So it really depends on how much and what you're planning on using an action camera like this for, but I really like what Insta360 did here by giving us three different options, depending on how much you're gonna use this. Personally, I can only see myself using the 128 gigabyte version, and I also think that is what you should get if you consider upgrading from a go-to, or if you're looking to buy this as your very first uh, uh, Go camera, then 128 is what I can recommend, honestly. This is 64. Uh, gigabytes and this is filling up quite fast. So to be able to have twice of that makes a huge difference because if I can record for another few days without needing to go back to my computer and dump the files, you know, I'll take that any day. Storage is key. And the more storage you have, the more fun you're gonna have because if you run with 32 gigabyte, which was the first go-to I had, you know, I was, I was needing to dump those files every single day. And also the fact that you get this 2.2 inch a touch screen and 2.7K resolution. You get the free frame, you get timed recording, you get loop recording, and you can basically change all the settings on this screen. That is enough to consider the 120 gigabyte storage or at least 64. But if you're gonna use it a lot, then 128 for sure, because I think you're gonna have a lot of fun with the Go 3 if you decide to pick one up. Now, the big question is who is this camera for and who should buy it and do you need it? Well, I would say anyone can buy this camera because it's so versatile. It doesn't require any level of, you know, expertise to use. You can just press the button. You can even talk to the camera and the camera will, you know, respond and record videos and take photos for you. But now it's even better because you have the screen on the backside. So you can basically put this on, you know, RC cars, anything on toys, whatever you want to do. And then you can monitor and frame everything so you don't have to bring up the phone every single time you want to frame something, which makes the whole process much easier and much faster and more fun because you can see everything here. You can do the playback and the preview of what you recorded on the screen as well. So basically anyone will have a lot of fun with the Go 3. And I keep coming back to the screen. It's just amazing. Thank you Insta360 for adding this screen. It's huge. It's the best thing that could have happened to the next generation Go 3. And it did. So let me know what you think of the brand new Insta360 Go 3. Is it something that you will be getting? And if you're gonna get it, then what type of videos will you be recording with it? There's also a list of accessories, including the Go 3 itself, down in the description below, which is a list of my recommended accessories, which I've been using with the Go 3, and some of the accessories that I've been using with the Go 2, and also the Insta360 X3, which also is, by the way, you know, the combination of the X3 360 camera and and the Go 3. It's gonna be really nice to test these out on the next trip. Really excited for that. But yeah, are you gonna get the Go 3? Let me know down in the uh, comments section below. All the links will be linked down there as well. So with that said, thanks for tuning in and I will catch you in the next video.